Good morning. Am I on? Yeah. yeah. Um, just to, in case folks are wondering, intimations will be kept to the end of the service. We're going to begin our worship on this Remembrance Sunday with a well-known hymn, <clears throat> O God, Our Help in Ages Past. It's number 161 if you're using the church hymnal. shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. Remember the fallen, felled in their prime. Remember the heroes, cut off from time. Remember the victims of violence and hate. Remember the helpless, left to their fate. Remember the mothers, with memories alone. Remember the fathers, at crosses of stone. Remember the widows, and sweethearts loves lost. Remember the children and ultimate cost. Remember our forces <clears throat> and pray for our peace. Remember your poppy and pray that war cease. We will remember them. Let us remember them.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Let us come before God in prayer. Let us bow our heads. Our great and gracious God, you are our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. We gather in your presence to worship you and to remember all those who gave their tomorrow for our today. We remember their great sacrifice and we pray for those that continue to serve our nation, to protect and promote our freedom, peace and prosperity. We remember them mindful always of the supreme sacrifice that you made for us in and through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who died and who rose again for our life, to give us abundant life and to guarantee us eternal life to come. Lord, help us to be still, that we may know that you are God, that you are our strength and our shelter, our rock and place of refuge. Speak tenderly to us and touch all hearts and minds. A bruised reed you shall not break, a smouldering wick you will not quench. Minister your grace, love and mercy to each as each has need. Heal that which is broken and grant a sense of wholeness and well-being to all. Father, forgive us our sin for the sake of Jesus, who paid the price of our sin on the cross at Calvary, who rose again to make us righteous and to give us a future and a hope. Grant us grace to follow him in righteousness, peace and joy. Receive from us our sacrifice of praise and our freewill offerings. Take them and use us for the furtherance of your kingdom of love, here and elsewhere. Bless our gathering in this place and later at the war memorial. May your word challenge and comfort us. May it enlighten, edify and encourage us and be a source of succor and solace to us. May it instruct and inspire us to seek your face that we may follow Jesus as the way the truth and the life. May it guide and gladden us, enabling us to walk in that most excellent way of love and to pursue the path of peace. Bless our families and our friends and all who live and work in our communities. Bless all who are similarly gathering throughout our nation and indeed throughout the Commonwealth in acts of remembrance this day. Be especially with those who have served and who continue to serve in the armed and auxiliary forces and their families. We thank you for their service and ask that you protect and prosper them. Comfort the bereaved. Heal the sick in body, mind and spirit. Provide for the victims of war, especially in Ukraine at this time. Give strength to the weak. Lift up the fallen, be with our veterans, give wisdom to those charged with making difficult decisions that affect the lives of so many. Be with the king and members of the royal family. Be with us all, in Jesus' name, who taught us to say together, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite Douglas to share our reflection today.
Good morning, everyone. As we remember the brave servicemen listed on our village war memorial and those whose names were scrolled on the screen during the two-minute silence, I would like to share a few details with you of some of the servicemen behind the names. Unfortunately, a lot of World War I records were destroyed in the Blitz and time does not permit me to cover all of them, but we can certainly look at a few. On the, each of the pictures there is an inscription, so I'll just read out from left to right. Private Frank Silver of the Gordon Highlanders, Corporal Stuart Cameron, also Gordon Highlanders, and Lance Corporal Joseph Valentine of the Black Watch. Again, left to right, Trooper William Smith of Fife and Forford Yeomanry, Corporal James Ritchie, also of Fife and Forford Yeomanry, and Private George Ritchie, who's with the Canada Contingent. So here we have two brothers, George Cuthbert Ritchie and James Wellington Ritchie, who were both killed in action in World War I. Their father was William Ritchie, who was the station master at Edsel, and he retired to Edsel. Their mother was Mary Cuthbert. The top picture is of Corporal James Wellington Ritchie. He was the younger brother. He was born in Alloa in Clackmannanshire in February 1896. He enlisted in Edsel in the Black Watch. He was initially a trooper in the Fife and Forfa Yeomanry at the outbreak of war. He served in Gallipoli in 1915 and he later transferred to the Black Watch. He was killed in action in saint Emile in France. He died on the 10th of September 1918, aged 22. George is buried in the British Cemetery in Templo Le Guiar in France. The bottom is Private George Cuthbert Ritchie, the older brother. He was born in Larbert, Stirlingshire in August 1892. He enlisted in October 1914 as a Canadian wartime volunteer. His regiment was the 3rd Canadian Infantry. He was killed during a series of attacks near Givinci. He was severely wounded on the 15th of June while digging out others who had been badly burnt by a Jack Johnson, a German howitzer shell. He died two days later on the 17th of June 1915, also at the age of 22. George was buried at Duxbill, Givinci, but unfortunately the grave was lost and he is now commemorated on the Canadian Vimy Memorial in France. On the top we have Private Frank Silver, he was born just up the road in Arnhall in 1876. His father was James Silver and his mother was Mary Crockett. Prior to the war, Frank worked as a wool dyer. He was also vice president of the Edsel Angling Club and the president of the Edsel String Band and a fine musician. His regiment was the Gordon Highlanders. He was wounded on the 20th of November in 1917 on the first day of the Battle of Cambrai and died two days later in a military hospital near Arras in France. The Battle of Cambrai was a British attack in the First World War, followed by the biggest German counter-attack against the British Expeditionary Force since 1914. The town of Cambrai in the Department of Nord in France was an important supply centre for the Germans. It was known to the British as the Hindenburg Line. He died on the 22nd of November 1917, aged 41, and he is buried in La Bouguerre Communal Cemetery in France. The bottom we have Corporal Stuart Guthrie Cameron. He was also born just up the road in Carriston in 1888. His father was James Glenn Cameron, his mother was Annie Buchan. 
He enlisted in Leith as he was living and working in Edinburgh at the time. His regiment was the 2nd Gordon Highlanders. And on the 1st and 2nd of April 1917, the objective of the 2nd Cabin Highlanders was to take the village of Lingat near Arras. The casualties recorded from the battle were six officers and 91 other ranks. He died on the 2nd of April 1917 near Arras, aged 28. His younger brother, Smith Cabin, also served in the Black Watch and he was wounded in France in 1917. He is commemorated on the Arras Memorial Panel by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and also by his family in Edsel Cemetery on the family gravestone. The top picture is of Private William Smith. He was born in St. Vigens in Angus in July 1880. His father was Peter Smith and his mother was Annie Raitt. His regiment was the Scottish Rifles. He was one of the first to join up and mobilised with the Fife and Forth for Yeomanry in 1914 and at some stage transferred to the Scottish Rifles, Cameronians. It is believed he died from shelling of the battalion front line in the trenches of the Third Battle of Scarpe on the 30th of April 1917 in the Arras area. The Third Battle of Scarpe resulted in the British Army suffering nearly 6,000 men killed. He died three days later on the 3rd of May 1917 in a military hospital, aged 36. He is also commemorated on the Arras Memorial Panel and in the Edsel Cemetery on a family gravestone. And finally, the bottom picture is of Lance Corporal Joseph Cool Valentine. He was born in Montrose in October 1886. His father was James Cool Valentine and his mother was Helen Cool. His wife was Jane Leddingham Crabb. They were married in June 1913. His regiment was the Black Watch. Prior to the war in 1911, he was serving with the Black Watch in India. And he, he must have served his time because he later was the postman in Edsel in 1914. The crisis of the Battle of Ypres hinged around the, the village of Geluvelt, and on the 27th of October 1914, a company from the Black Watch sustained heavy shelling near Geluvelt. Joseph died that day on the 27th of October aged 28. He is commemorated on the Menin Gate at Ypres. May all these men rest in peace and we always remember them. Amen. Thank you, Douglas. I find it very moving and particularly poignant that we should be able to put faces to names and to have that additional information, it's so helpful. I remember visiting a member of my congregation in the High Church in Stornoway, and his daughter had been preparing portraits for an exhibition for the Iolair exhibition. These were men returning from the First World War who perished but a mile from, from home, just off the coast, a few, maybe even 50 yards or so off the coast of Stornoway and to see the faces really brought it to life. You remember, you know, it, it, it just makes it so much more poignant and to learn about the men who gave their lives um, for our nation and for our peace. We're going to sing once again. We're going to sing Psalm 46, but it's number 36 in the church hymnal. God is our refuge.
Brenda's going to read to us from both the Old and New Testament scriptures. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And from the New Testament, Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 9 to verse 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen and thanks be to God. Thank you. We shall sing once again, and remembering those who took a vow to serve our nation. We sing hymn number 704, I Vow to Thee, My Country.
want to turn not back to the portions of Scripture that Brenda read to us a few moments ago, but to another text in the New Testament Scriptures, and to Hebrew 12, verse 14, and these words, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. And particularly these words, Pursue peace with all people. This Remembrance Sunday, our theme is the pursuit of peace. We are called as Christians to pursue peace with all people. We long for that day as we heard in our reading when God shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And again in Romans chapter 12, if possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. The Lord Jesus, after all, says to us, he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Peace is integral to the church's witness to and in the world. It is a peace that surpasses all understanding. Let us therefore take up the banner of peace and advance the cause of peace within the church, within our families, within our communities, throughout our nation, and indeed to the ends of the earth. There was a song that used to, I used to hear regularly as a teenager coming from my sister's bedroom, which had as its chorus, all we are saying, is give peace a chance. And yet we live in a fallen world. And we know that peace is such a rare commodity within our world. And yet we trust in him who overcame the world to establish peace by the blood of his cross. And we remember all today, all those who gave their tomorrow for our today, who made the ultimate sacrifice for our peace and protection. And yet wars continue in various parts of the world and even tragically on the European mainland. When will we learn? I was strumming the guitar and singing along to a couple of songs in the week written by Eric Bogle. One of the songs was called and the band played Waltzing Matilda and it's about a young man who went off to war and lost both his legs at Gallipoli. In 1916 and the other is called the fields of France and in it the songwriter is reminiscing he's sitting by the grave of a young man killed in action in 1916 and he asks did you really believe that this war would end wars well the suffering the sorrow, the glory, the shame, the killing, the dying, it was all done in vain. For Willie McBride, it all happened again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Well, with that in mind, let us pray for peace. We pray for peace that we might, first of all, experience a peace within. Because if there is to be peace out there, there needs to be 
peace in here. And we live in a world, and it's by nature. We understand that we're not, we don't always possess this peace. And anyone who spends any time on social media or who watches the news or reads the newspapers understands that even in our own nation, very often people who talk of peace and love are full of rage and bitterness and hatred. These things, you see, come from the fallen nature. And hence we pray to God, give us that peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. That we might enjoy peace. And it starts with us individually, but it also must be exhibited in the church. We pray for peace in the church. For there's not always been peace throughout the church. Her witness has so often been scarred by sectarianism, by squabbling and strife. You know, it's interesting. We were listening to Douglas earlier, reflecting on those young men who gave their lives, most of them local men, good men. But you know, they were fighting good men on the other side too. I can understand, I always have, find real difficulty when it comes to the First World War. I have no problem with the integrity and the goodness of those who gave their life in service of our nation and give thanks to God for them. But what a waste. I remember reading Lamarck's famous book, All Quiet on the Western Front, written from the German perspective. And it's the very same stuff, the jingoism, the whipping up, the lust for warfare, thinking that it will be all over by Christmas. The whipping up of hatreds and hostilities. The Second World War is much easier to understand when our when our forces faced tyranny and evil, our nation, and the Commonwealth. But one of the things that really struck me about reflecting on the First World War is how the churches were blessing those, and rightly so, but on both sides here are brothers and sisters going to war against one another. Tragic. We must pray for peace that we might exhibit this peace and be a beacon of hope and peace in our world. We must speak up and speak out for the sake of peace that other generations do not have to go through the same thing, the same experience, that mothers and fathers and wives and husbands do not get that knock on the door to tell them their loved one has died in action. Let us embrace God's promise of peace. Because according to the Bible, peace is a gift that we are to cherish. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. We try. The world makes treaties. Nations make treaties. But so often... They're fragile and they break down. But Jesus says, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. This peace is the chief fruit of the Spirit. And this peace is a grace that like a, a delicate or a precious orchid needs to be cultivated and cared for. It is such a delicate thing. It's such a precious thing. Peace is a good that we need to communicate near and far. 
Let us seek to live in peace as much as it depends on us. Let us witness to peace in our words and in our works. Let us be willing to go that extra mile for the sake of peace. Twice in the church. I'm hesitant now, but no, I'm not really. Twice in the church, I've upset folk by mention, mentioning the names of politicians whom people rightly or wrongly hate. And I was, it came to mind today because in a few moments, I was going to mention Churchill, who said, jaw, jaw is better than war, war. And I'm mindful of an American president who all my friends, and I'm not really a fan of myself, but all my friends lambasted and called every name under the sun. And yet he went that extra mile. I remember the ridicule that was lavished on President Trump when he went to North Korea. Or when he actually got Jews and Arabs sitting together and they made peace. Unlike all his predecessors who tended to drop bombs on people. Love him or hate him. He went the extra mile for the sake of peace. And that's what we need in our world. Whatever the intention is or was. Peace is better than murder and mayhem. And so for these things, I express thankfulness. Let us pursue peace. It is found in the Prince of Peace, who made peace by the blood of his cross. We are to proclaim peace in Christ. We are to follow him. Let us focus on Jesus in the pursuit of peace. You see, he came for the sake of reconciliation, for redemption, for renewal. I'm mindful of Martin Luther King. How he stood there when others were, were suggesting to him that it would be better to take up arms, to fight for liberty and so on. To end discrimination. And he said, no, no, we're going to do it by peaceful means. We're going to protest. And it was much more effective than those who sought to take up arms. Or Gandhi as well in the last century. Others. Christ came and Christ showed us a better way. It's the way of reconciliation, bringing people together, seeking to mend relationships. He came for our redemption and renewal. He came to give us health, to heal us. Because what does the fallen nature do? What does the sin nature do? That old fashioned term, sin, but it's so real. It disorganizes, it breaks up. It leads to disorder and bitterness and hatred. And that's not what we're called to. Jesus has come to establish harmony, to bring people together in him, through him. Let us follow God's path of peace and pleasantness by following his example, by being willing to take up our cross in the pursuit of peace, to go that extra mile irrespective of what others might think or say. Let us practice peace by practicing self-control. I'd be the first to admit I'm not good at it. And that's why I need grace every day. You see, the, the, by nature, it's, we want to lash out. We want to scream and shout at times. Maybe sometimes it's justified. 
but we need to practice self-control if we're to establish peace in our own lives and in the lives of others. We need to practice peace by showing care and consideration and compassion towards others. We need to be able to show empathy and sympathy. We need to serve God and others in the cause of peace by recognizing that jaw jaw is better than war war. By going that extra mile. Finally, let us protect peace by practicing love. I was saying on Friday at the burn, we had a service of remembrance there. And um, I quoted that renowned theologian, the late Jimi Hendrix. And he once said that when the power of love overcomes the love of power, only then will there be peace on the earth. Peace is not something, peace and love is not something merely for the Woodstock generation. It's not necessarily for those who wear flowers in their hair, it's for us all to pursue and practice and enjoy. Let us protect peace by promoting justice at home and abroad. Let us love God and love our neighbor. That's the summation the Ten Commandments, the moral law. That's what God wants of us, of humanity. Let us treat one another as God's image bearers. I've never been, but I have friends who have been to places like Auschwitz. And I find it so hard to comprehend what man is capable of and how he could do what he did and continues to do in parts of the world. We need to recognize our common humanity and reach out <coughs> in peace and show a better way, that more excellent way. Let us protect peace by praying and providing for those who indeed protect our peace. Those who did serve and those who are serving. We will remember them. We remember those who continue to serve our nation, who labor night and day to protect us from those who would do us harm to preserve the peace that we can so easily take for granted. Let us pursue peace for the love of God and for the sake of one another. May the Lord add his blessing to these few thoughts. Amen. I'm going to hand over to the choir who are going to lead us in praise.
Dave is going to lead us in prayer. Let us join together in prayer. God of peace, we have met this day in solemn remembrance of those who lived and died in service of their country. We give thanks again for their lives and pray that you would enable us to be worthy of the sacrifice made on our behalf. In this place, we remember particularly those whose names are etched on the village war memorial, where we will meet again shortly. May they rest in peace. May our time of remembrance motivate us to aspire to a better future. We remember not only those who lost their lives, but the grieving families and friends they left behind. We remember also those who came home, but who lost something of themselves in the fields of battle. Those who lost limbs or reason or sense of self. We pray that your comfort will be known by all who have seen the realities and dangers of war. Ease the pain of those who grieve. Bring renewal to those whose health in body and mind may be diminished. We seek your blessing upon members of our armed forces and upon their families. Grant to them safety and fulfillment in their duties. Defend them as they face the dangers of many kinds and grant to them wisdom and courage as they work for peace and justice in our lifetime. We remember those who faced and continue to face significant challenges at home. For families torn apart by war, for those forced to leave the familiar and seek safety and refuge elsewhere. For those whose homes have been destroyed or who cannot return due to the dangers caused by conflict. We pray for lands where neighbors have become enemies, where brothers have picked up weapons against one another. And we seek your reconciliations and peace. We give thanks for the times and places where we can see the seeds of peace growing. We pray for those who have never known war, and we ask that this will long continue. Grant a love of peace to our young people, that they will make choices that lead to harmony. We pray for our King and for his ministers, in Westminster and at Holyrood, and those in local government. Grant to them the wisdom in the fulfillment of their duties, that they will seek and make our world a place of safety and of prosperity for all. Grant that your church will speak out with passion for the sake of those who are voiceless. Save us from silence or complacency and inspire us by your Holy Spirit to prepare the way of the Lord today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. We shall sing once again well-known hymn, Abide With Me. It's number 580 in the church hymnal.
your tomorrow, we gain our today. Before the benediction, we shall sing together the first verse of the national anthem, God Save the King. served in the hall after the service. We shall gather at the War Memorial for a short act of remembrance at 12.30. Douglas will give another talk on the Commonwealth War Graves on Wednesday at 11.30 in the Church Hall and I would urge you all um, to come along and join with us and we, that will be followed with a short time of worship and a picnic lunch. Bring along a roll or a sandwich, um, tea and coffee, cake possibly, maybe even soup will be provided. 95 shoe boxes, along with £70 in cash went off to the Blytheswood Shoe Box Appeal. Thank you to Judith for organising it and to the Edsel Primary School and all of you for your contributions. Yesterday's coffee morning raised the hefty sum of £545.36. Uh, Thanks to the fellowship team for organising it and for all who contributed to and participated in it. We enjoyed fine food and fellowship uh, yesterday. So well done, uh, everyone. I think the, the money is going to Crossreach. Is that right? Irene I'm going to, is going to say a few words next Sunday about the angel tree and about the collect, a collection for Syria. Um, but she's here. If you want to speak to her afterwards about it, I'm sure she will be only too happy um, to provide further information. And finally, before the, the benediction, Douglas is going to read to us the citation from Presbytery. Next week is our communion service. And um, we also will have, a, it's also going to be a congregational uh, meeting and vote. This is the second and final reading of the citation from the Presbytery of Angus for Edsel Lethna Glenes linked with Fern Carriston and Memure. The Presbytery of Angus is calling a congregational meeting of the congregations of Edsel Lethna Glenes and Fern Carriston and Memure to consider and approve a new basis of union in accordance with the new Presbytery Mission Plan. This meeting will take place after morning worship in each church on Sunday 20th of November 2022, that's next Sunday. The proposal is to accept the basis of the union will be put to each congregation by ballot. This includes all who are on the communion roll along with any who have been officially recognised by the Kirk Session as adherents. Signed, Karen Fenwick, Convener of the Supporting Congregations Committee. Thank you. The Presbytery is in favour. Both Kirk Sessions are also very much in favour and recommend that all vote in favour of um, Union next Sunday. Let us conclude. And now as we leave this place of worship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with each one of you now and forevermore.